gargantuan, terrifying creature lurking in the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The size of an island, it can tear a ship in half and devour the poor souls inside. The Kraken is truly a creature of nightmares. Now when you hear the word Kraken, I'm sure you're thinking of some kind of supersized squid or octopus. But it hasn't always been thought of this way. The origins and appearance of the Kraken are far more ambiguous. But where did the Kraken originate and how do we come to think of it as a tentacled terror? Let's find out. The legend of the Kraken dates back to at least the 13th century in Norway with the publication of the King's Mirror, a guide for the king to impart knowledge unto his son who would one day rule. It describes contemporary life across Norway, Iceland and Greenland. While it's mostly about moral and practical issues that would face a king, it does go into some detail about the kinds of wild animals that could supposedly be seen at sea. Among the mentions of whales, sharks, and even narwhals, the king tells his son about another huge creature in the ocean, the kraken. The king suggests that there could only ever be two kraken in the world at once, due to all the food they would need to survive. Another early reference to the kraken can be found in the Orvar Odds saga. It recounts the exploits of a legendary Icelandic hero who encountered a creature called the Hafkufa, the island-sized mother of all sea monsters. Over time, the Hafkufa has been interpreted as a reference to the Kraken. Not much is said about its appearance, and a lot of artistic license was taken in its depictions, though they do say its nose jutted out of the sea and was mistaken for rocks by unlucky sailors. The Hafgufa is accompanied by the Lingbaka, which is also hungry for humans. So just how did the Kraken come to be seen as the squid-like creature we think of today? The answer to that may lie a few hundred years later. As trade and travel became more widespread in the age of exploration, maps were developed to include a lot more detail. To give them a bit more flourish, many cartographers would fill the seas of their maps with outlandish looking creatures. One of the first and best known maps of Nordic countries was the Carta Marina, created in the 1500s by Swedish writer and cartographer Olus Magnus. The entire map is filled with all kinds of bizarre looking creatures. If you look off the coast of Norway, you'll see two of them gazing at one another. The one on the right has large eyes and what Magnus describes as horns. While the creature shown here isn't explicitly named by Magnus, many have taken this to be a representation of the Kraken. When it comes to the Kraken, arguably the most influential description is in the form of Eric Pontipedian's A Natural History of Norway. He devotes considerable time to describing the Kraken, telling of how it could be mistaken for an island and how its arms were capable of pulling a ship to its doom below the surface of the sea. From there, the Kraken started to become known as some kind of giant squid or octopus-like creature and began showing up in more and more art, literature and fictional works. If you've ever seen some ye old drawings of a giant octopus or squid attacking a ship, Chances are it was done by Pierre Denis de Montfort, a French naturalist who was a big proponent in the existence of giant cephalopods. His own writings even went so far as claiming that there were two different types of giant octopus, one which attacked ships between Europe and America and the other lurking off the coasts of Africa. De Montfort's views echo those described in the King's Mirror as well as the tale of the Hufgufa and Limbaka. The Kraken would gradually make its way into fiction as well, where it would continue to be described as squid-like. In Herman Melville's novel Moby Dick, Ahab's crew briefly encounter a giant squid, and Ishmael makes reference to Pontipedian's accounts of the Kraken, though he does note that the bishop's description is a bit exaggerated. 
In Jules Verne's sci-fi classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the giant squid encountered are said to be the Kraken of legend in real form. And of course, there's always this in movies. Release the Kraken! Like any kind of legend, what we thought of as the Kraken has taken hold in our minds through a combination of embellishment and distortion through retelling across hundreds of years. When it caught on in art and popular culture as a squid-like creature, there was no turning back in the public consciousness. And in a way, it's not hard to see why. Giant squids and octopi themselves are very elusive creatures and unlike few other things on this planet, they're almost alien-like. For a legendary creature that was so vaguely described in the beginning, it makes sense that people latched on to this idea of it being one of the strangest looking things in the ocean. And it was only in the late 1800s that giant squids were even accepted by science as being real animals, with the documentation of carcasses washing up on shore. Perhaps not a big stretch for people in the Middle Ages to think there could be something bigger in the ocean that they can't even comprehend. Even just the idea of the ocean itself is unnerving. It's one of our big unknowns. Perhaps the terrifying appearance of the Kraken in our minds is a manifestation of all of our fears of the deep blue sea. <laughs>